got to say for yourself? Answer me, boy, before I hand you over to the authorities. We had nowhere to go. And I couldn't get work. And I had John Willie to look after. We've not done any harm to your hut. The last time we met, you told me you were putting this child in the workhouse. Aye, I know. And I may just as well have done it, because that's where he's going to end up anyway. And so will I. Mr Coxon will see to that. Who? Coxon. Friend. Neighbour. Well, we used to live next to him anyway. Coxon? He's still got his house. Blackleg. Hmm. He always was the blackleg type, if I remember rightly. <coughs> this child's very ill. Do you realise that? Of course I do. I don't need to be told. How dare you speak to me like that? And address me as Miss while you're about it? Oh, I'm sorry, Miss. It's just I don't know what I'm going to do. Mr Coxon will be back soon with the justices. I wouldn't tell him where John Willie was. He thinks I've done him in. Why in heaven's name do you simply not tell Coxon your brother was here? He'd have gone and told you. Well, it doesn't matter now, does it? <coughs> He's going to get the satisfaction of seeing us go at the workhouse anyway. Coxon doesn't like you, I take it? No. I don't <coughs> like him either. Or his rotten sons. Do you think you could carry this child? But it's coming on to rain again, miss. And he's got a bad cough. Please, if I could just stay here till he's better. Can you not answer a simple question, boy? I asked you if you could carry him. Well, I don't know, miss. Very well, then. We'll wrap him up in the blankets and carry him between us. You'd not put him out, miss. Not unless you want him to die. Do you? No. Well, come along, then. Now, raise him up. Tell him to open his mouth. Nonsense, nonsense, another one. Good. Now, lay him down. You go and sit down there, boy. Help it down like that, boy, or you'll be ill too. That dog's a sheepdog, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, miss. Where'd he come from? I don't know, miss. My dad found it. Oh, where? Just roaming about. Abandoned? He was half starved, miss. Farmer abandon him, I wonder. I don't know, miss. You do know the penalty for sheep worrying, I suppose? No. The dog shot and the master sentenced to penal servitude. But, miss, we've had him for years and years. At least seven. 
He'd not do a thing like that. Even so, he may not have been abandoned without cause. He'd never kill anything, miss. He's as gentle as a lamb. We'll just have to see. Well, what now? I suppose your Mr. Cox will be looking for you. Yes, miss. You realise, don't you? <coughs> the workhouse will be the death of this boy in his present condition. Is he as bad as that, miss? Of course he is. He must have been ill for days. Didn't you notice? No, miss. Not least he started coughing. <coughs> you can stay here till he's fully recovered. Do you mean it, miss? Do you really mean it? I'm not in the habit of saying things I don't mean. But don't imagine it's going to be easy here. You haven't fallen on what you might wish to term a soft spot. Understand? Uh, yes, miss. Oh, I'll work. I'll do anything. Clean up the whole place. Really? Well, just the roof parts. I mean, what you haven't been able to get to. You'll do as you're told. Yes, miss. Have you any other clothes in the summer house? Well, yes, miss. A pretty wet, though. Well, go on back now and fetch all your possessions. Put the door of the summer house into place and do not, I repeat, do not go near that place again. Not even into that part of the garden. Do you understand? Yes, miss. What did I say? Clear all things out of the summer house, shut the door, and not to go into that part of the garden again. Good. When I give an order, I expect it to be obeyed. Right, miss. Boy, the things are dry. We'll take them to your rooms. Rooms, miss? They're quite adequate. Simply need cleaning. You lie still now. I'll be back soon. He can't hear you, miss. I'm perfectly well aware of that. You've told me already he's deaf and dumb. Nevertheless, since he seems to understand you, I dare say he'll eventually understand me. Come along. It isn't the day for the grocery cart. Mr. Potter, miss? He's not due till next week. Well, maybe he thought you'd forgot something and brought it on. Can't afford to pay him. Shall I go and see? No, go inside and stay there. Do you know who's at the gate? No, miss. Coxon. Now, I wonder what he's come for. Well, boy, what shall we say to your friend? He's no friend of mine, miss. To Coxon, then. He must have followed you into my grounds. How did you get in here before? Well, never mind. So, what shall we say to him? We could see I've been taken into your employ, miss. Yes. Yes, we could. Excellent. But we'll let him have his say first. Come on. You take the path running down the side of the garden and keep out of sight. I'll call you if I want you. Miss P. Marsh. Well? I've come to tell you something I think you should know. 
Mind you not be pleased, but I do think you've got a right to know. I see. Well, get on with it, man. It's about young Halliday. A boy called Davy Halliday and his idiot brother. Although I'd like to state at this moment of time, I'm not certain of his brother's whereabouts. But I did see Davy getting into your grounds through a hole in your garden wall. And I thought it was my rightful duty to keep you wise, miss. I see. So he's been coming into my garden through a hole in the wall. Yes, miss. I saw him with my own two eyes. I followed him this very morn. Oh, really? I oh, fancy him coming through a hole in the wall when there's a perfectly good gate he could use. Nevertheless, David Halliday isn't stupid, so I suppose he must have had good reason for coming through this hole in the wall. I'm sorry, miss. I don't quite follow you. No? But you followed him, Mr. Coxon. You followed him to deprive him, as you thought, of shelter. Shelter you didn't think to offer him yourself as a workmate and neighbour of his. You let him go on the road with the added responsibility of a sick and afflicted child. Well, Mr. Coxon, I have to inform you that your kindly action in telling me that my grounds are being used to shelter vagrants is quite misplaced. Furthermore, I have to inform you that David Halliday is in my employ. And if he used this hole in the wall you speak of, it was very likely to cut short the journey round to these gates. You've taken them on? It's a bit late in the day, isn't it? The place has gone to rack and ruin. But anyway, it's quick work of Arno out about it. He was at his wits end the last time I saw him. Good heavens! David Halliday could never be at his wits end. He's far too resourceful. And as for my grounds going to rack and ruin, that's my affair. I'll remind you, Coxon, to keep your place and remember whom you are addressing. As for the younger boy, at present he's in bed with a cold. Satisfied? No, I'm not satisfied. There's something fishy going on around here. Nobody takes on a pair like them without good reason. Oh, really? Well, Mr. Coxon, you're quite welcome to probe into my motives for employing David Halliday and his brother, if you wish. <laughs> his brother. You're welcome to him. Well, he didn't think you're as wonderful as all that, David Halliday. I only said it because I wanted to keep him in his place and to settle an old score of my own. Don't you go thinking I've gone soft in the head and you can do just what you like. I can soon send you back where you came from. And stop walking behind me like that. I am not a mother duck or the Bishop of Durham. <laughs> now, let's go and look at those rooms. Well, this is it. There's a nice big fireplace and a griddle to cook on. As you can see, everything is in a muddle, but the roof's sound enough. It's grand, miss. Why, it's like a palace. Oh, thank you, miss, thank you. Well, first you must clear everything out and then scrub it all thoroughly. Yes, miss. The bed's iron, rusty but still quite whole. You can have a mattress for it from the house when, and I repeat, when the bed's clean enough to take it. There's a room above which could be used to store wood. Store wood, miss? For the winter, of course. Well, don't just stand there. Get yourself some soap and water and get started.
I'm sorry to bother you, like, Parson. I was just wondering, uh, have you seen out the young Davy Holiday and his brother? Not been to service recently. No, I wasn't meaning that. I was just, I was just wondering if they, uh, how they turned up at the workhouse, like. Mm -hmm. See, I've been up to that old drift where they were camping out, but there's no sign of them. Only one blanket and all. Well, I took another one up, but just had to bring it back. I feel a bit guilty. See, just recently, I mean, we haven't been able to afford them any bread. The lad might have got a job, moved on. I would wear two, man. I mean, he's got a dog. I mean, there's no farm around here gonna take a lot on with a dog. Not with all them tills of sheep, where ain't going on. More. No, thank you, miss. I think I've just about got enough strength to show you around the old stables. Good. Uh, no, John, will you? You must eat all your supper. <laughs> Here we are, miss. Where did you get this? From whom, miss? From home. It was me granny's. It was given to her on a wedding day by the people she was working for. I see. Do you know how much this is worth, boy? No, miss. It's old, I know that. It's old. Indeed, it is old. If I'm not mistaken, it's one of the early Coalport pieces. You must have seen the name on the bottom. Yes, miss. No. I mean, I didn't know what it said. Of course, you can't read. Well, this could be worth a lot of money. How much do you reckon, miss? More than a pound? Yes, more than a pound. Isn't it funny? I'd have gladly taken a shilling for it when we were starving. Very funny. However did you manage to carry it about without breaking it? John Willie carried it. He mightn't be very strong, but he is careful. Is everything to your satisfaction then, miss? Yes. Yes, it is. You've worked very hard. And it won't be long now before that brother of yours will be ready to be moved in here. Still, I think he could stay a little while longer. Yes, miss. Miss, I've been thinking. Could I start on the vegetable garden next? Yes. I could dig it over. You'd grow a lot of stuff in there. And then there's that land up by the summer house. No. You can dig the vegetable garden with pleasure. But I told you before not to go near the summer house. I won't have that land touched. Do you hear me? Sit down, boy. I want to talk to you. I shall call you David. How much did you earn in the mine? Oh, well, miss, it varied. No PD was ever the same. A good wage could be 16 shillings. A week? No, miss, a fortnight. Always got paid by the fortnight. But in bad times, it could be as little as four shillings and sixpence. And John Willie? He never earned anything, miss. It wouldn't take him on. Scandalous, however you look at it. Yes, miss. Well, David. I can assure you, you'll never earn 16 shillings in my employ. Nor even, as far as I can see, four shillings and sixpence. Miss, I'm willing to work for no... Nonsense. That sort of talk's fit for nothing but a hungry animal. And that's another thing. Snuffy. An objectionable name for a dog. We shall call him Rex from now on. Understand? Yes, miss. Now, where was I? Yes. If you decide to work for me, I shall supplement your wages with your food, clothing, your house, 
and your education. Education, miss? Yes. I propose to teach you to read and write. And in the process, I hope to impart some knowledge of letters to the child there. You really mean you'll learn me to read and write, miss? No. Only you can learn. I shall teach. Understand? Yes, miss. Now, your wages. I can't offer you more than two shillings a week at most. No, don't go telling me you'll be content with that for life because I won't believe you. As soon as the child's strong enough and the winter's over, the mine and big wages are sure to call you. Rex! Rex! Come on, Rex. Snuffy! Come on, Snuffy! Do you want a job doing, mister? Mr. Talbot! Davy Halliday! What are you doing here? Miss Peamosh has given us a job. Oh? I was half wondering myself. Only I've heard so many tales about her. Old and strange, they say. She's not old or strange. Well, not really. She's all right. Set you on for good, has she? Well, I don't know about that. For the rest of the summer, anyway. In the winter, too, I think. Hey, we've got rooms to ourselves. And she looked after John Willie when he was bad. We were sleeping in a summer house, you see, and she found us. Yeah, I thought me end had come. But she took us in and she nursed him. John Willie, I mean. He'd have died if it hadn't been for her. He's all right now, mind. Hey, you'll never guess what. She's learning as me letters. She says I'll be able to write me your name soon and read and all. That's wonderful, lad. The best news yet. You'll never be lonely if you can read, you know. Can you? Oh, I. And write. I always carry a book around with us. Oh. Well, it's nice to hear of something good happening for a change. Have you not got set on, then? No. I've travelled for miles looking for work. The further I went, the worse it got, so I come back here. I'm camping out in the old drift, just over the hill, you know? Hey, that's where we were before. So them's your blankets and things I've been using. I'm sorry. Oh, you're welcome, man. I don't need them, honest. Here. Take this. Go on. No. No, I can't take that. You'll have worked hard for it. I've got everything I need here. Yeah? I've eaten that much food that's coming out of me ears. You can pay us back if you want. When you're in work again. I'll pay you back, lad. That's a promise. Hey, you can tell us if you see me dog. It's a black and white sheep dog. It keeps disappearing. Oh, I know. He hasn't eaten it for days. This will do for the present. Like a five-year-old, it will start from the bottom and work upwards. This was my brother's book many years ago. We learned our letters together. My father taught us. We had many happy times before. Before what, miss? Before he died. Your father? Yes. Yes, my father. My brother went to live abroad, you know. Yes, Miss Anu. This child's not stupid. Anu, Miss. Well, then we mustn't treat him as if he is, must we? No, Miss. Now, say A after me. Don't look at him, look at me. A. Ah, not a. A. Ah.
Say hey. He. Good. Now a. He. No. A. E. That's better. Now B. It's Snuffy. Rex, I mean. He'll be hungry after such a long absence. I guess he will. B. Good. Miss, miss, come quick. Whatever's the matter? Look, miss. You see? Instincts will out. He's not a killer, miss, he's not. If they've traced the killing to him, David, I won't be able to help you. You'll be held responsible, and the dog will be shot. <laughs>